Hello, welcome to this Learn Learn Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a log flume simulator. So we've got a boat that moves itself around the track. Uh, when it touches the wheel, then the wheel turns. When it hits the rapids here, it speeds up. When it comes around the corner, uh, when it gets near the camera, it takes a picture. There we go. Okie dokie. Well, let's get started. So first thing we need to do here is let's load up Scratch and let's go to Create. So we're going to create our background first of all. So what we'll do, let's get rid of Scratch the Cat. Let's rename our project to Log Flume Simulator. Good stuff. And we'll click on the backdrop and we're going to create ourselves a new backdrop. So for today, what we're going to use is we're going to do a bitmap. So we'll click Convert to Bitmap. Um, and what we'll do here is we'll click on the paint bucket tool and we'll choose a green color for the background. So maybe quite saturated, but a little bit dark. There we go. That should be fine. So there's our green background. And now what we need to do is we need to do the actual path of the water. So for this, we use the brush tool. Okay. Click on the fill. This time we'll shift it over to a blue, kind of turquoisey blue color. Size of the pen needs to be much bigger. Let's put that at 90. That's much better. There we go. So what we'll do is we'll just draw a nice even path for our log flu. There we go. You could do yours however you like. I'm just going to do mine like this. Just like that. There we go. Good. So there's my log flume. Excellent. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to create our boat. So we'll go here up to paint. And this time we'll leave it in a vector mode. We're going to use the circle. And this time let's change our boat. Let's do a yellow boat. Nice and bright yellow. Yeah, that'll do. There we go. So there's our yellow boat. And what we'll do, once we've got the circular shape, we're just going to flatten the nose and the tail off. So we'll click on this one here, the reshape tool. And what we'll do is we'll add some nodes to the front. There we go. Which means that as we squish it, it will just change with them nodes there. Nice flat nose, a little bit less rounded. Let's have a look. There you go. So that's a good shape for a boat. It's a little bit big, so what we'll do is we'll click on the Select tool, select it all, we'll just drag it to make it smaller. That now should be about the right size. But what we need to make sure we do here is if we zoom in, you'll see that this here is the center of the rotation of the object. So what we need to do here is just drag that so that it sits, uh, if you imagine that way is the front, just slightly forward over the center of the rotation. That way, when it turns, it will rotate from about this point, which should make it rotate OK. But we'll find out in a bit. We can test that out. So there's the basics of the boat there. What we also need to do is we need a circle here. And this one is going to be a red circle. Uh, and then we'll do another circle. So the way we do the second circle is just click on the first. And then copy and then paste, or you can use Control C and Control V. That way, the two circles are identical in size. But we'll click on that one and we'll change the fill to purple. There we go. And the reason, oh, let's just turn, let's just stop you, make it a bit of noise. The reason we do this is because the, the red and the purple are going to act like sensors. You can actually make them much, much smaller. Uh, it will still work, but I'm just making them big so you can see them. And what's going to happen is our boat's going to go along. When the red sensor touches the green, we know that it's gone too far to the left. So we need to turn it right uh, clockwise. When the purple sensor touches the green, then we know it's gone too far to the right. So we need to rotate it anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So there we go. So that's all done there. Now what we'll do is we'll start to code our boat. The code's quite simple to start. We say, okay, when the game starts, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move our boat to the start, which I'm going to have the boat there as the start for mine. Now, 
If you click on the motion blocks here, you'll notice that in the motion blocks there is a go to here. And if you look at those coordinates there, they're quite uh, peculiar coordinates. And if you move the boat to where you want it, you'll see that the coordinates automatically change to the place that you want it, uh, that the boat's already at. So we'll move the, plate, move the boat to where it wants to be, and then we'll drag that over into here, and those coordinates are now fixed at that location, which means any time I press Start, it'll automatically move to that location. What we'll also do is we'll point it in 90 degrees, which is that way, which is uh, where it needs to start. Good. So every time it's going to start right back there, and then what we'll do is we need to keep on uh, moving this boat. So before we move it, though, we need to tell it what speed we're going to be moving at. And because the speed can vary, uh, normally they're going to go quite slow. But here in the rapids, which I'll do the yellow bits in a minute, it's going to go quick. It's going to vary, which means we're going to need a variable. So we click on the variables. Uh, we'll use this one, actually. We'll right click, rename that variable, and let's call it speed. So that's the boat speed. Good. Now, at the start of the game, we'll set the speed to 1. Um, you can change that later. Um, but for the moment, we'll just set this boat speed to 1. And then what we do is we have a loop. And this is a forever loop. Now, what the forever loop does is it just keeps on repeating. Uh, and that's really useful because we don't want this boat to stop. We want it just to keep on going around the track forever. So we're going to use a forever loop. That's good. And what we'll do here is we'll say, OK, if the red bit is touching the green, we'll rotate it clockwise. And the way we'll do that is we'll use the two color touching thing here. So if this color is touching this color, click on that color there and we'll use the picker tool here to pick the red in the center of there. So if the color red is touching and again, use the color picker to choose that green. If the red is touching green, then what we'll do is we'll just turn. We won't do 15 degrees. We'll do 7 degrees. 15 is a bit harsh. And that's OK there. So that's the left sensor done. We'll right click and we'll duplicate that and put it again. Put the if statement inside of the forever loop. And this time we'll do the purple. Oh, I'm doing that wrong. Click on that, click on the sensor, there we go. And this time we'll not do seven degrees clockwise, we'll do seven degrees anti-clockwise. There we go. So we've got it all there, which is good. Now what we need to do is we need to say, okay, we'll just move. So we'll use the move and the, oh, 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 there you got a bit too fast there. And we're not going to move 10 steps. What we'll move is we'll move the speed number of steps. So hopefully if we press start now, there you go. So it's moving along, speed number of steps. As soon as it hits the wall, it starts to turn. One's a little bit slow, so let's try two, shall we? Run that again. There you go. Two is a bit faster, isn't it? You can do it any speed that you like. It's perfectly acceptable. But I'm just choosing that speed because it moves me around the uh, around the actual course quite quickly. Good. Brilliant. So now we've got the basic speed sorted. What we're going to do now is we're going to edit our backdrop. And we're going to put some yellow in here to indicate the rapids. Uh, sorry, not having a grey, actually, because we've already got yellow there. A grey in here to indicate rapids. And when it touches the grey, we're going to speed up. So we'll go back to our backdrop. Uh, and this time we use the pen tool. But we'll make it much smaller. Let's say about 8. And we'll change our fill to a grey colour. That should do it, I think. That looks about right. You could choose whatever colour you want. And we'll just draw some grey for rapids here. There we go. You could do your rapids as long as you like, but I'll just do it to there for the moment. Brilliant. There's my great. Good. And now we go back to our boat. There we go. In fact, let's change that sprite's name there. Let's not call him Sprite 1. Let's call him Boat. There we go. 
and we're going to change it here now this bit of code here moves steep speed steps um, that's okay we can leave that there but what we also need to do is before we move the speed steps we need to alter the speed depending on whether whether or not we're actually touching the gray and we can do that using an if else so we'll put the if else in just why is that being a bit let's move you out of the way a minute that's where we need it so if and then put your speed after that if else the moves move speed steps and there we go and what we could say here now is okay if the boat is touching the color uh, gray there we go so if the boat is touching that color gray what we're going to do is we're going to set that speed to a higher speed so Go back to our variables and we'll set the speed to four and then duplicate that else two. There we go. Good. So what happens here is if we're touching the gray, we'll increase the speed to four and move four steps. If we're not touching it, we'll make it two. There we go. And our boat should now start moving around. Let's just see that in a minute. So it moves round, moves round, and there you go, much, much quicker. Perfect. So now we've got the basic movement of the boat sorted. What we're going to do now is we're going to do our little spinny wheel here. So we're going to create ourselves a new sprite, and we're going to paint it. Uh, we're going to leave it in vector mode, and what we'll do is we'll click on the circle, and let's do uh, turn the saturation back up so I can see what color we're doing. And we'll do a brown wheel there. That will do. So I'll do a circle there. Make sure the circle when you do it is over this uh, center dot there, which you should just be able to see. Otherwise, it will move in a really weird sort of manner. And there we go. And what we'll also do is we'll do another circle around it like that. I'm going to do this, but this time set the fill to nothing and set the outline to brown. If you can get the brown about there, it doesn't have to be the same brown. And this time, change the let's, no, let's go to 20, shall we? There we go. We'll change it to 20 because I'm going to do a circle with like those spokes in the wheel, just like that. Oh, I've done another one there. Let's get rid of that. Good. So there's the center. There's our outer bit of the wheel. We'll also do some lines in between. Uh, outline. Let's change that again. Put that brightness up. Change that to brown. Hey, you can use whatever color you want. Just make sure it's not the same color. That'll do. Let's set that to 10, shall we? And now, hopefully, there we go. We'll do some spokes in our lovely little wheel there. We slightly different to the previous one but we'll have a go at this uh, so it almost looks like a proper wheel there we'll make it a little bit smaller notice I just click there select it all hey that should do it hey that looks nice isn't it? nice little circle we can hit it here and then we'll just move there brilliant now again make sure when you zoom in that the center of the circle is on that dot we can't see it so I'm hoping it's there we'll find out in a minute and then what we do, nice and simple, at the start of the game, when start clicked, what we'll do, first of all, we'll bring it right to the front so that it's always on top of the boat. Um, where does that go to the front layer? And then what we'll do is we'll put it in a, another, another forever loop. So again, forever, what it's going to do, it's going to wait and see if it's touching the boat, it's going to spin. So that's nice and easy. There we go. If we are touching the boat, uh, touching, this time we'll use touching the boat. So if we're touching the boat, if you can't see boat there, just check you have renamed your boat sprite to boat. In fact, speaking about it, actually, let's just change that wheel one to wheel so we know what it is. If touching the boat, what we'll do is we'll just turn it in a clockwise direction. About three degrees, I think, should do. Let's have a go at that. 
Let's have a look. Hey, now, there you go. Now you can see I've done that wrong now. If you notice, that's going all crazy. Um, what's happened there is the, the wheel there is not rotating around the center point of the axis. So let's just move that there. There is the center point. I don't know how I managed to put it in the wrong place. There we go. Done. Let's try that again. So let's run that again. Let's see if I don't know if it liked those uh, bits for the circle around the outside actually there. Let's have a look. Ah oh, no, it seems to be okay. There we go. Good. We'll make sure that's all right. If it um, if it does go off at one and it disappears off over here, I'll just remove that outer circle or make that outer circle a little bit thinner. Uh, now I've got a slight issue there. If you notice, my boat's gone off the edge of here there. That's because here. I've not got any green on this left hand edge. So what I'll do is I'll just add a green bit there. Uh, a little green slither down the left. That should be OK. I might have to here just put a bit more blue there in a moment, but hopefully that'll fix that. You'll probably find this, you have a few little uh, bits and bats like that in your game that you'll have to fix. It's just hitting the green and it's going off the end because it's not sure what to do. Let's have another look. There we go. It goes around here. Zooming along through the rapids. Happy days. Swings round. There you go. Much happier. That's all good. Brilliant. Good. So now we've got that bit there and we've got the rapids. The only main thing we need to do here now is we need to do our camera. So let's just uh, stop that a minute and let's have a look at our camera. Well, you can see our camera is just a re big rectangle with a small rectangle and then a small white circle in it so let's have a go at doing one of those uh, let's create a new sprite we'll paint it again um, this time we'll just use a bitmap we don't need a um, we don't need a vector because we're not doing anything complicated turn that down to black as one bit and then we'll just do a little black bit there again you can take as much time as you uh, as you like uh what's happening here filled or outline outline and uh, no. so what is that doing hey there oops undo that so there we go oh, there you go so there's my camera however my camera here again if you just zoom in Notice the center point is there and my camera is actually up over here. That's actually no good. So what we'll do there is use the select tool. We'll bring that over here. Make sure it's over the center. And the reason being is the boat uh, and the camera. The camera takes a picture when the boat is within a certain distance. And it measures the distance from the center po point of the boat to the center point of the camera. So if they're not both centered, then it won't take a picture. It will think it's too far away. Uh, that's OK. That's a little bit big still. So let's make that a bit smaller. That's a nice, that's perfect size camera. And oops, I'll just move it again. Make sure it's back over the center. Good. Let's put him there so he's ready to take a picture. So there's our normal camera, which we'll call, uh, let's just leave that as uh, costume one. Then we're going to duplicate it because we need to do the flash bit. So here we're going to use a line. And I'll just do some yellow, like bright yellow sort of flash. You could do what you want. There we go. And we'll just have some lines coming off that make it look a bit like a flash. Again, you could do a slightly flat, fancier version if you want. Yeah, so now we've got two costumes. We've got the one that it starts on, and we've got the flash costume. Good. So what are we going to do now? Well, let's start coding this. So at the start of the game, we're going to switch our costume to costume number one, which is the no flash. Um, so where's my costume? There you go. Switch costume to costume one. And then what we'll do is in a loop, a forever loop, all we're going to do is we're going to wait until the distance, so that'll be distance to the boat is less than a certain amount. So, and we'll do less than 50. So what we'll do is we'll wait until the distance of the boat is less than 50. And then what we'll do is we will, 
um, switch our costume to costume number two so it makes it look like it's taking a picture we'll leave that there for about a third of a second so we use a wait and then we'll switch it back to costume one there we go switch back to costume one so as it comes around here we get within a certain distance it'll flick to costume two wait 0 0.3 and then flick back to costume one then what we need to do is we need to make it wait for about another five seconds and the reason we do that is because we don't want it to go straight back up to here and start seeing if it's less than 50 because what will happen is it will just then start flashing again uh, we don't want to do that we want to give it a bit of a pause to let the boat get out of that proximity so we'll get that running there you go <clears throat> so now hopefully hey there you go so it flashed and now it turns back over perfect um, a little bit short flash there so i'm going to change it to 0 0.5 so now we've got our flash on our camera working. What we need to do now is that when it flashes, we need to display a picture up here. So what we'll do now is let's create ourselves a picture. Let's paint. Uh, we'll leave it in uh, vector modes because we could do some uh, quite cool stuff with it. Let's do the outline. There we are. Uh, that's the outline for our picture. Although we'll have a white background. Uh, a white background there, that'll do. Then we'll do a smaller bit inside it like that so it makes it look a bit like a sort of polaroid and then the internal here the fill is going to be uh, the background of the sky so let's just turn that up let's do a sky color yeah that looks about right isn't it let's try that yeah that's a good sky color so we've got a sky uh, sky color there now what we need to do is we need to do the water so we'll do do a box there but this time we'll change it to a much darker color and then we'll go over to the blue uh, yes that's perfect so there's our water we want to make it look like it's a bit wavy so we can use the reshape and we'll add some nodes along here for reshaping and just drag the nodes you can do as many as you like to make it look a bit um, a bit wavy there you go so We've got our picture, it looks a bit wavy. Now we need to do the boat. So we'll use the circle. Let's change the fill. Uh, let's change it back to the yellow colour about there. Yeah, that should do it. So draw that there. And we'll use the reshape to add some nodes so that it can reshape it, make it look more boaty rather than just a sort of uh, oblong. and uh, that'll do there you go so now we've got the boats we've got the waves the boats in the front at the moment so what we need to do is we need to use the backward here it's just to push it back behind the waves you might have to click that a few times um, there's our boat behind there and now what we'll do is we use a similar technique to add the people so i'll do a circle uh, that'll do for a body let's change the filter to green for that person and then we'll do some arms We'll use, uh, let's use the square thing for the arms. There's one. Rotate, there's one arm. Again, take as much time as you need to do this. I'm, I'm sort of rushing through because uh, obviously you want to get through the uh, tutorial. So control C, control V. Add another arm. There we go. And then we'll do a circle for the head. There we go. There we go. Again, you can, oops, you have a really flat head. That's not much use, is it? There we are. Brilliant. So there's, oh, oh, no, do that. So there's one of our people. Let's click on the select tool. No, 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 no. Let's put that back. Need to, hey, oh, oh, what's happening here? Oh, that's why. Okay, if you want to select the people using this, then click on one of the buttons, hold control. 
Uh, so click on that and click on one of the pieces. Hold control and then click the other ones. Oh no. Shift, sorry, not control. One, two, three. There we go. That's got all of them. Control C, control V. A little bit fiddly that, but we got it there in the end. Control V again. So not control, hold shift to select multiple items. So here, I uh, clicked on one, hold shift, and then I clicked on all the other things and it added it to the selection. You can see it adding. So then I can control C and control V to copy it. If you don't want to do that, then just obviously just, just draw more circles and stuff. So now what we need to do, our people are sort of hanging over the boat. So we need to push them back. Just keep using, oops, backwards until they're in the boat. And then you can change, obviously change their outfits and stuff and customize them. There we go. And maybe do the same with the arms as well. There you go. You can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. You've got the idea. I'm sure you've got the idea. So we've got loads of people in the boat, and that's all done. Now our picture here is a little bit big, so let's use the select tool, select everything, and it's a little bit big still. Let's make it a little bit smaller. That will do. And um, we'll just put it. Um, we'll put it here for the moment, in the middle of the in the middle of the sprite there good 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 excellent and now what we do is we say okay let's let's code it at the start of the game what we do here we go when start clicked we need to hide this sprite because we don't want it to be anywhere so let's go looks hide the sprite and then what we do now is we have a forever loop just like before and this time oh no we don't Nope, scrap that. All we do is hide it. Slightly different this time. And the reason being is that there's not going to be any trigger here within itself uh, to actually start it. The camera here is going to trigger this thing to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this bit here and we're going to use a message. So, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a message. A message is a bit like a text message that all of the sprites can receive. And let's call this photo taken. Doesn't really matter what you, what you call it, but you know it's taken a photo. That makes the most sense. And we'll put that bit of code there um, just after you switch to the camera. So what happens here? It uh, switches to the flash. It flashes. Wait a second. Switch back to the no flash. And then immediately it sends a little message that says, yep, the photo has been taken. And what can happen is this sprite here now can pick up on that. And it says, OK, when I've received photo taken, so when we know the photo has been taken, what we'll do is we'll change our size to zero because we want it to be tiny to start. Once it's at zero, then we're going to show it because we want it to appear. And then we're going to get it so it gradually gets bigger. It grows and grows and grows. And the way we do that is we just do a loop and we'll repeat 10 times. And all we'll do is we'll just change the size by 10. So it'll start at zero, bigger, 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 bigger. Uh, and then we'll just wait for a little while, maybe wait for a second. And then we'll hide it. There you go. Let's try that. So hopefully now what will happen is as soon as that flashes, this will then trigger. It will make it small, show it, grow slightly bigger, wait a second, and then it will hide it all over again. So we'll see if that works. There we go. Come around, come around, come around, come around. There we go. Flash taken, and there you go. Brilliant. Now, there's a slight issue there that it popped up behind this water wheel. That's nice and easy to fix. All we need to say there is um, we'll just go to the front layer before we show. There we go. So before we go, we'll go to the front and that should fix that with that. Uh, that's pretty much all uh, done now. The only thing I will do here is let's go to our backdrop and let's create our title for mine. Uh, so what we'll do here, I'm just going to call mine, let's do a box. There we are. Oh, and we'll fill that there. Uh, da, 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 da. Oops, let's move it slightly over to the right. Well, that'll do. Uh, oh no, make it a little bit smaller. Uh, there. Oops. <laughs> Small box. 
just like that. And we'll paint it as well. Uh, click some text. And let's call it, I'm going to do handwriting. And let's do splash mountain. Again, I'm just rushing on mine so you can do yours uh, much quicker, uh, take more time with yours. Uh, but there you can see. So we've got a bit of a title. Um, but that's pretty much it. There we go. So that's all done for the functionality. The main functionality is all there. The only thing uh, that you need to do to improve it now, which I'm not going to do, is you're going to want to add some sounds to it. So, for instance, when this wheel here is spinning round, you want to add some sound noise. And that's quite simple. Just go to your wheel and you're going to look for one of the sound blocks. There you go. Click sound. And if you click on the sounds, at the moment, that's got the pop sound but you can choose any sound that you like just by going to choose the sound or you can record your own and just simply drag the sound in there. So there we go. Start pop sound. There you go. So whenever it touches there, it'll go pop, 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 pop. There we go. Let's see if that works. But it's playing it a little bit too much. Uh, and that's because it keeps repeating that. So the best way to avoid that is what we'll do is rather than do it directly like that, we'll just copy the script. Um, we don't need any of those bits. And what we'll do is we'll do it like that. So we've got a separate script here just for the sound. So if it's touching the boat, playing the sound pop until done. And then just for good measure, I'll add a bit of a, a bit of a weight in there of 0.2 seconds. That might fix it. And you can use that technique with pretty much any of the things that you do. Um, let's have a look. Take that out of there. There we go. There you go. So that's working fine now. So that's uh, and you can change the weight, you can change your sound, um, use a similar technique so that when it's going through here. When it's going for the uh, the rapids, it'll make a sound. And you might also want to do a sound for your camera. Um, so just have a look through, pick the appropriate sound, or record your own. There you go. So that's the tutorial all done. In terms of improvements, uh, you might want to do, as I said, the sound. You might want to have a bit here where there's a waterfall going over the top there, so that when people... Oh, let's wait for the clicking to go. Uh, when when all the boat goes past here, or the water goes on, on it, and the people in the boat scream or something like that, bit of animation. Um, there's loads of things you can do to improve it. If you like the tutorial, uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, and please like the video. Any problems whatsoever, just drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much.